Welcome to the fourth episode of season two of Overrated. My name is Sujay and I'm joined once again by Garish and Surya. In this episode, we're going to be discussing Megamind, starring Will Ferrell, Tina Fey, Brad Pitt, and Jonah Hill, directed by Tom McGrath. So without waste any time, let's get right into the categories. Uh, where were you? So I believe I watched this first time in what I have to call the Redbox era. Like it's, it's shortly after the Blockbuster era, but before the Netflix era. And I, I don't recall exactly like when I watched this, but it was probably like in middle school. And it was from Redbox for sure though. Anyway, this episode is sponsored by Redbox. Redbox, please <laughs> give us money. Yeah, uh, I think for me, this I watched this a little later because uh, it was weird because I think the first time I watched it, I actually watched it like, like recently, like when like the like online streaming was a thing, and like I just like looked up, I was like I've never seen this movie, like look it up because I think I saw like a funny scene on YouTube, and I was like let me watch this whole movie, and so yeah, I think it was it was pretty recent. I couldn't tell you like the date, but it was definitely like sometime like you know, just on a website, but then I think it came on TV a couple times when I watched it again, with CJ probably, but yeah. Yeah, the first time I watched it was in India. So I was at one of my friend's sleepovers. And then for whatever reason, he was like, let's watch a movie. And then, like, I had never even heard of this movie. I, I was just like, what is this blue man doing here? <laughs> and I, mean, it, I guess it kind of makes sense because, like, in America, you would probably see, like, all the commercials for it and whatnot. No, I, so, like, I saw a lot of trailers when it was about right. to come out. I do remember. Right. Like, you, you got, like, none of that in India. And it wasn't even, like, a high, like, you know, like, anticipated movie or anything. So, yeah. like, understandably, I didn't really hear about it until then. But, like, honestly, like, I'm, I'm glad I watched it because, like, like now I know. Yeah. <laughs> it's for the culture. It is a very sleepover movie like i definitely saw this at other people's sleepovers too like after i'd watched it on my own but yeah um we can go down to score it um next category we'll start with our personal score so like i said like this is a really good movie i don't know if i said that already but um i really liked it i i would actually put this on the same level as shrek 2 so i'm gonna say 85 for this one too uh i think is i don't think it's as good as shrek 2 but I th- that's just me but i thought it was also a really good movie i'd probably give it like an 80. Yeah, I'd say it's very highly underrated, but like also kind of like for the same reason as Gurish. Like, I don't think it's quite up there, but like it's still like more people should know about it. So I gave it a seven. Slept on. Yeah. Let's take a look at the Rotten Tomatoes score. So critics and audience both had a score of seventy-two percent. So that's all right, I, especially for an animated movie of this caliber. Uh, let's drop it in into let's talk about the plot. So. This is, this is my synopsis of the movie, if you haven't seen it in a while. Um, after defeating his arch-rival, Megamind realizes that ruling the city isn't all he imagined. He creates his own superhero to battle, and after his new hero, Titan, turns evil, he must become a hero himself to save his city and the woman he loves. So it's a pretty interesting movie. Um, this some stuff I'll cover later in trivia, but like the whole concept of the movie is kind of based on like if Lex Luthor like, defeated Superman and... like. That's what the concept is, which is pretty interesting. I don't think, like, there's, like, superhero, like, a- like anti him now, but, like, at this time, this was a pretty interesting concept. Megamind walks a Deadpool kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was watching this, and at the beginning, I'm like, is this Superman? It's and like then, a Superman mm-hmm. spoof, yeah, because they right. both and come but, from, like, But then, like, planets. halfway through the movie, like, we'll probably get to this soon. I was like, is this Spider-Man? Like, just coming off of Spider-Man 3, there was, like, some... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. No, nah, it's it's definitely, like, a spoof on superhero movies, because they, mm-hmm. they're, like, very clearly borrow stereotypes from what they show, like, yeah. growing up and all that shit, but they're like, look at me. <laughs> right. All right, let's talk about some memeable scenes. I have quite a few, so I'm gonna let you guys go first. Chris, you want to start with some of the scenes you thought? Yeah, um, I don't. Okay, so one of them that I thought was like pretty funny. I don't want to like go straight off, straight ahead, but I was just like for me personally. But like, do you know how he like finally becomes Titan and he's like, I'm the villain now. Like, obviously the like famous scene where it's like, I wouldn't say he <laughs> defeated under new management. Like that's that's a meme format. But I mean, like the. When he like finally spells out his name and it's Titan, it's like T I G H T. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I that's that was so funny. <laughs> Apparently, like, like, yeah, I was in the trivia too. It was like, yeah, he didn't like understand that it was supposed to be like Titan, and so yeah, in, no. like, in the captions for the movie, every time they say Titan, it's spelled like T I G H 
he <laughs> And I like noticed that I was like, "What the fuck?" And that scene came. I was like, oh, "Okay." <laughs> That's that. I, I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah. Um, I think I think another funny scene I'd say is uh like the whole, the whole uh, when they go and they find out that what's the main guy's name? Metto Man. They find out that Metto Man's like actually alive <laughs> and he's just like chilling in his bed. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that I thought that whole like interaction was kind of funny. There's some good quotes in that scene. He was like yeah, yeah, walks up yeah. and he sees like the glass and she's like do you see this? And she's like, he's like, yeah. And he's like, that's ice. And he's like, yes, that's what happened when water gets cold. <laughs> he's yeah. like, okay. Yeah. yeah, that whole, that whole interaction is like pretty funny. Uh, I don't think I have anything particularly that I'm missing out. Yeah, I mean, I, it's like a pretty, I might be missing something, but those are like the two scenes that I kind of just remember off the top of my head. I mean, I had a ton of things written down, but I'm probably not going to go through all of them. Uh, so, kind of, okay, yeah, at, at the beginning, right, so you got, like, the whole, um, kind of, what is it, like, the key to the, like, the kind of, like, the key to the city thing, they're just, like, celebrating Metroman, or, like, I, I, oh, yeah. I think it's, like, the, he, he has, like, this new museum that's opening up or something, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then and they're all celebrating, and then there's, like, this one woman, like, as he's flying by, she like kisses his shoe in like the weirdest way, and I thought that was really <laughs> off putting. But I mean, I, I guess it happened, so it is what yeah. it is. I had that scene too, and there's like right after that happens when he's like walking on the water, and so I was like, I love you, Metro Man. He's like, Nah, I love you, random citizen. That's, like, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a floor man. That's yeah. a mean floor man. Yeah. Um, yeah. You guys remember the outlet store in Romania quote? <laughs> Yeah, I yeah. thought that was pretty good. Uh, too. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then he's like, we're getting from an outlet store. He's like, don't say it. He's like, in Romania. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess like another underrated meme was like, when he's trying to, when he finally like kills Metro Man, right? And yeah. he takes the stage at City Hall and he's like, okay, what's the next like evil thing I'm going to do? And he's like, okay, think of the most evil thing, right? The most dastardly evil thing or whatever. And then he's like, <laughs> Now multiply it by six, <laughs> and then he just leaves. <laughs> and I will get back to you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, um, I guess like kind of an in the times meme is kind of like the no you can't poster. Yeah. <laughs> no you can't. Uh, Good Obama what, what, in Yeah. There. What year did this movie come out? Like oh eight. This 11. is twenty eleven, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think that was right about like almost That's real election like, time season. Yeah, not yeah. quite, but like people still would have known like the format. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the I last forgot. one. I'll, uh, sorry, I finished. Yeah, I think the last one I'll go for is um, during the fight scene, like at the at, like kind of like the closest to the climax. They're like punching each other back and forth, and then Meg Megamind's like ah back and forth banter. You go first. And then all you see of Titan is just like him like screaming. <laughs> and then he's like, I don't really know how to work with that. <laughs> uh, I, I I forgot one of the scenes they just reminded me, but like during that final climax, and he's like, Oh, you're a villain, all right, just not a super one. He's like, What's the difference? And it's like presentation. Yeah. I thought I thought yeah. that that's that's classic. pretty memeable. That's that's one of the classics, you know. There's like a lot of classic meme formats that come from the movie. Yeah. Um, so I, some of mine that I didn't, uh, you guys didn't say. You uh, know, when Metro Man, he's like in that first like museum, like their like their initial fight. Um, I just thought it was really funny the way that they're broadcasting their entire conversation to like the entire city, and yeah. like he's like, wait, wait, give me a second. He's like, the sun <laughs> is warming up. Yeah, that's funny. Um, yeah. R- right when Hal becomes Titan um like me like he does the whole like watch thing and turns into like the like his space dad but yeah. me just puts on an apron and a wig and he's like yep this this will work <laughs> and then which is yeah, kind of interesting to think about because later on like he uses the like the transfer uh, yeah so it's yeah. like he had they had two of time. them like why didn't <laughs> why didn't they yeah i don't know <laughs> They had, that, they had that funny montage, like, training montage right after that. And then he hands Titan, like, his, like, costume or whatever. And then he's like, do I have a son? <laughs> 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 so that was good. 
Um, maybe I don't want to be the bad guy anymore. It's like another classic. It's a from classic, me. classic. Uh, and then when he, um, he's got uh, Roxanne on top of the tower, and he's like, you're, you're living in a fantasy, Roxanne. There's no Easter Bunny. There's no Tooth Fairy. And there's no Queen oh, of yeah. England. That's a, that's a, that's a, yeah. that's like the yeah. meme from this movie, if anything. Yeah. 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 There's, like there's a lot of good memes. There's a lot of them, yeah. I feel like. I like I, for me, I think that's like the, the flagship meme. Flagship. Yeah. Uh, I might use that for my meme for the Insta, uh, thinking about it, but. Yeah, there's the quite handler. a few floor mats. Yeah. <laughs> Any other memes, meme bowl scenes you guys want to talk about? I, not really. I mean, I feel Which like... Do you think it's the most like, memeable? Most memeable? Oh, I'd say, okay. Fo- I, I got one too, but I'll let you go ahead. Right. But floor mat, I, I mean, I would say like, easy, I'd say to make a floor mat, I would say like the most memeable one is probably like when, uh, when he's like uh, on the, like the whole, he gets like saved by, from, like he saves the city for a mega mine. He's like, oh, and he's like, thank the Lord, we're saved. And he's like, I'm going to say saved, just under new management. <laughs> I think that's like, that's like one of the most classic formats, I guess. Um, for me, like, this was like a pretty, pretty good one, too. And probably slept on in some senses as well. So, like, uh, when Megamind comes to Titan's apartment, to like, or Hal's apartment, I guess, before he actually becomes Titan, um, He's like, is this a robbery? Because the lady across the hall has much better stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, yeah. Um, yeah, Jonah Hill my... basically just plays Jonah Hill in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, I guess my most memorable scene, uh, I, I guess I'll go with the um, there's no Easter Bunny, Tooth Fairy, and there's yeah, no Queen that's, of England. That's, that's, that's a good, that's a good meme. Um, all right, then we can move on to the Jar Jar Binks Award, um, which character's the biggest meme. So, yeah, I went with Titan. Um, he's basically Jonah Hill. Um, <laughs> I, I forgot to mention this in favorite scenes, but, like, there's that one thing he's like, um, so you stole all this stuff? And he's like, yes. He, like, points at his nose. Oh, he's like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was really funny. Um, <laughs> it's the whole concept that he steals all this all this money, he steals a bunch of money, and he just stays in his shitty apartment, like, playing video <laughs> games. Like, that's all he ever yeah. wants. Um, and then this is one really like, funny quote that he has that I really liked. Um, when he's, like, beating the shit out of, like, Megamind, and he's, like, and he's, like, yeah, this is for stealing my girl, and then doing all this, and he's, like, then this one's for stepmom. How could you do this to her? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I must have missed that one. Yeah. Uh, that was good, yeah. So I, I said Titan. I- I, I did I see like okay like doing this I was trying to think like who's more meme because Titan was like clearly the, the like obvious one and like I want to say Titan and so I was like trying to think of other people because I like knew Titan would probably be one and I, I like thought about like maybe like a close second would probably be like Meteor Man himself because <laughs> like Metro he kind of like there. he's definitely up there because like Especially, like, you realize in the, when you, like, do the flashback of the fight, and you realize what happened. Like, he slowed down time and had, like, an existential crisis. Yeah. <laughs> and then he was, like, that was, like, one of the funniest scenes of the movie. Because, like, you realize he's, like, basically God. And he's, like, ah, what do I want to do? This? And he just, like, retires. And then, yeah. like, when everyone meets him again, he's kind of, like, oh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a guitar. <laughs> I'm a guitar player Music now. man. <laughs> Music man. It's kind of, like, like, keep the logo. <laughs> It's kind of yeah. like memory loss, Harry, and then he starts like just taking up painting. Yeah, like <laughs> like the most no, but random I, hobby. Yes, yeah, I thought he was like pretty close second, but like honestly, uh huh, it, it was hard to compare him to Titan. But I'll, I'll say Matteo Man just because he has he has some good points and they want to be repetitive. I mean, I'd say Titan's like no question the yeah like yeah. Jar Jar Binks Award winner, but I guess like for my honorable mention, I'd say Minion. Like, he doesn't actually get a whole lot of screen time, if you think about it, because, like, he just leaves halfway through. Kind of like how Harry just kind of, like, takes a back seat in Spider-Man 3. <laughs> but, yeah. like, when he is on screen, he has, like, some pretty good lines. So, I'd say, like, that's pretty good. Like, he, ha- he has the outlet store in Romania line. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, just his general, like, personality, I think, is, like, pretty meaty. I would say also I mean, the uh, fact that he's like a fish in like an exoskeleton suit is like pretty yeah. like that he's not anything I special think. you know I think for me the honorable mention was Megamind himself like he has like a lot of funny lines and <laughs> the namesake um, just his accent like just like the way he pronounces some words is just really yeah. funny Met- like, <laughs> yeah. Schulhouse. 
<laughs> yeah. All right. Um, then we'll move to the next category, five minutes of internet trivia. So, um, like I said before, the film's plot was based on the premise, like, what if Lex Luthor defeated Superman? So there's a lot of, like, superhero references in. Um, one of them that, like, I didn't notice when I was watching, but, like, after I read it, like, I understand it, is that Hal Stewart is named after two characters who are Green Lantern, Hal Jordan and John Stewart. Oh, yeah. So that's, that's, that's pretty nice. cool. Um, I got a lot of casting what-ifs. Um, so originally, Ben Stiller and Robert Downey Jr. were approached for the role of Megamind, but they both turned down for scheduling conflicts. And Ben Stiller ended up taking like a smaller role as Bernard, the, the curator. Oh, Ben oh, Stiller really? was playing out. Yeah. yeah. I, I yeah. saw the credits and it was listed that he was the executive producer, or like one of the executive producers. Yeah. Right? Um, but yeah, I, I, I did not make any kind of like voice acting connections to anybody in this movie. I went to the credits and I was like, no, all Jonah these, like, Hill. Jonah, Jonah Hill is pretty peculiar. Jonah Hill is just um, himself in the movie. I guess Tina Fey, like, if you know what Tina Fey's voice sounds like, you can, like, hear yeah. it as Roxanne. But, I mean, like, I should know what Will Ferrell looks like. I did not make that connection. Yeah, well, I could not I mean, tell Will Ferrell. It's because he, like, he puts on that man. accent. It's like, it's like Despicable Me when, um, uh, Gru does, um... Yeah. Oh, yeah, Steve Carell. Yeah, honestly, Whoa. we should do Despicable Me, too. <laughs> uh, I'll consider putting that on the, the docket, because I really like Despicable Me, too, but, um... Mm. Yeah, so other casting what-ifs, um, for the role of Megamind, other people who were considered were Peter Dinklage. So I thought that was pretty interesting. <laughs> I don't know why they would have considered Peter Dinklage, but I guess. Just, uh, just he says the funny like the elf connection. Smart character. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you all um, remember him in Buddy the Elf, right? Or like whatever that movie's called. Oh, yeah. There's like all these random small parts that Peter Dinklage did, I guess, for like um, nice. four people. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was the first time I ever saw him on screen. I think the first time I saw him was during Game of Thrones. Yeah, there's other roles that he's played that I just don't recall. But if I went back and like looked it up, I, I'd probably remember that. But yeah, Elf is he one was of in them. Infinity War. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah, it's after Game of Thrones. <laughs> um, other people for Metro. Oh, for this for Metro Man. So other casting what ifs. Dwayne Johnson. No. <laughs> I'd I mean, say I could I could see it. I I don't know what Brad Pitt's voice sounds like honestly, so I don't I can't really like say. So like I don't think Brad Pitt's like, Man is not... like he's supposed to be like a spoof on like the hurt like a regular Superman. Like I don't see Dwayne Johnson yeah. as Superman, you know. Like I don't like I don't think you could pull it off. Why? But, like, he's if... black. No, yo. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I it's just that like most of the time when I've heard him in movies, like, he doesn't, like, he, he doesn't really fit, like, the type of, like, super, actually, no, yeah, yeah, no, he doesn't really fit the type of, like, Superman. What are their, he, he was, uh, what's his like, name? Like, most of the movies he's in, he's, like, kind of, like, not a bully, but he's, like, the bad, like, the tough guy, you know? And, like, Superman's, like, Are, are you saying be... Metro Man's not tough? <laughs> well, no, no, like, Metro Man is, like, a, he's, like, he's, like, Superman, as in, like, when you see him normally, like you, you think he's like uh, just like a regular dude. But like, he's saying he's rock? like a pretty two shoes. Yeah, 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 yeah. But like in all of the Rock's movies, he's like the big buff guy, and he's like he's not like the bad guy. But yeah, like yeah. a lot of his humor revolves around him just being so jacked that he can just like <laughs> just kind of say whatever he wants, you know. And it's I don't funny. know. If you ask me, I think Metro Man's pretty cocky, so like I I could definitely see it. And it's also an animated movie, so like yeah. he can just voice That's fair, Metro yeah. Man. I mean, Dwayne Johnson was Maui in Moana, Maui. Too, right? So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but like even in Maui, like you know what I'm saying, right? Like he's yeah, kind of like, I, the, I, I he's like the cocky mean. demigod, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, for the role of Minion, um, Adam Sandler and Mike Myers, who was Shrek, were uh, considered for the role. <laughs> That could have been interesting. I don't, actually, yeah. I don't even know who Minion is. The greatest crossover in history. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of DreamWorks, like, um, crossovers, because Ben Stiller was in Madagascar, and then... Oh, Min Minion yeah. was David Cross. Oh, yeah, he's, like, a, from Alvin and Chipmunks. That's the only thing I, like, <laughs> know him from. Like, I know he's yeah. done so many other things, but, like, that's where I always pin him first. But, yeah. Um, Roxanne Ritchie, last, last casting What If, um, Mindy Kaling and Julia Roberts were considered for the role. Um, Tina Fey is like a very like characteristic like her her comedy style is very like I understand like 
exactly in every role she plays, she's pretty much the same. So I feel like I could see that in uh, Roxanne too. Yeah. I mean, Nikki Kaling's an interesting choice. I don't think Julia Roberts would have been, but possibly. Um, that's so, all the casting motives. Um, so other trivia, this was like the movie, this was originally pitched as a live action film. So oh. <laughs> I just, there's so many Dreamers movies that I'm like, I can't even imagine as a live action film what it would be. Like, honestly, it wouldn't even be that bad just other than Megamind. Like, yeah, everything like, else. How would you possibly that. make him live action? <laughs> I don't see it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we were talking about how Megamind mispronounces words. Um, anyone want to hazard a guess how many words he mispronounces throughout the movie? I mean, I like, only noticed unique like words? three. Uh, unique yeah, unique words. words. Yeah. I'll, I'll say five. Three, so I'll, I'll say, say five. So Mega Mind mispronounces 20 different words without what? the movie. Okay, so now we have to like guess what they are. I didn't write them all down, but Metrocity, yeah, Shul, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Bolo. Oh yeah, yeah, that was there. Uh, I mean, I don't even get how you mispronounce that though, because it doesn't <laughs> look like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's another thing. Why does he mispronounce words at all? Because it's not like he was like, like born out. Like, yeah, he was, he uh, was grew up on a different He was like, yeah. he grew up here, yeah. like in prison, yeah, I guess. It's but... all just to drive that one plot point at the end. Yeah, he's like, no one says Matosky. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> His entire mispronunciation is just for that one plot point. It's yeah. like it's like how in uh, Spider-Man Three, he's like, you need forgiveness, go to church, just yeah. so anybody can go to church and become better. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Um, last trivia points. Um, despite a worldwide gross in excess of three hundred twenty million dollars, this is one of DreamWorks Animation's lowest grossing films, which is kind of wild. Can we, I think. Can we talk about what we were talking about before, like in the past? I mean, yeah, about we're about why. to just drop into most underrated. So I guess. Okay. We'll okay. Okay. Start yeah. that if you want. Yeah. Do you want to go? <laughs> is that your Is that your aspect or something? Or you just want to say something underrated? Oh, that was my aspect, so I, I guess I can... Okay, I guess you can, you can save it for then. Um, we'll start yeah. with underrated scene. Uh, so for me, most underrated scene was the press conference that he holds, like, right after he becomes... Like, right after he defeats uh, Metro Man, and they're playing Highway to Hell. And yeah. they... Because I guess at this point, they decided, oh, this is a kid's movie. Like, they cut it right before he says hell, so it's like, highway... To, and then he just cuts in the radio, like, malfunctions. He just starts playing something else. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that was like really reflective of the character, just like how he like tries to be like all like buff and like like evil and whatever, but it's kind of yeah. just a meme. I was considering <laughs> making that my underrated too, but I fixed the meme. Uh, I think for my underrated scene, I'd have to go with the beginning, honestly, like the intro, because like it's yeah. like such a like it's especially because sure. I watched the trailers, but I assume if because the trailer honestly is like is like almost the entire intro, but like. If you went in, I assume you did so because you didn't see the trailers, you said. But if you go in and you watch the beginning, like, it's kind of funny because it gets you for a bit, too. Because he's, like, he's, like, supposed to be, like, the next Superman. And then he looks and there's, like, another baby. <laughs> and he does the, like, equivalent of flicking him off as, like, a toddler. Yeah. <laughs> and then they just, like, crash. I thought and that's that exactly was... what I mean by, like, Metro Man's kind of cocky. Like, he's uh, like this yeah, the whole okay. time he's growing up. <laughs> Yeah, no, and the, I'm saying like the whole montage, like he's growing up and like Mega Mind does the decent thing, it just like blows up in yeah. his face. So I thought that was kind of sad. Like when he was like a kind of kid trying to like fit in, like I was like, oh man, this is kind of sad. Oh, <laughs> but then he like starts, yeah. <laughs> and then he I, just decides yeah, I, to be evil. I'm like, okay, yeah. Wait, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but yeah, I, I, thought, I thought it was very, it set up the movie very well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Like I was actually considering making that my underrated as well, but. For me, like, I went, like, super, super, like, no one's going to talk about this at <laughs> okay. all. Like, the most so, underrated of underrated scenes. Yeah, so, like, Let's hear it. right before the climax scene, like, the giant, like, battle between Titan and Metro Man, but not really. Um, yeah. When they're kind of, when they're broadcasting uh, uh, Rocks and on the TV, like, when Titan's doing that and trying to, like, kind of, like, taunt Mega Mind to, like, do something. Like, that animation of her hair, like, for some reason, like, the, the wind, like, the way it, like, looks, it just looks, like, so fluid. 
And like, what the hell? That, that's like the most weirdest, like random detail. But like, I don't know. Like during that but scene, like, you, that's all I could really focus on. So all like, you like and you'll miss it. Just like, like animation errors. Yeah, I, I guess like I'm just trying to like highlight the animation of that. Scene, <laughs> all right. I thought it was pretty nice. All right, interesting. We'll go then to underrated character. So uh, mine was Minion because I think he really uh, cares about Mega Mind, and he's like looking out for him. He does everything for him basically. He's he's pretty funny too. Like a lot of his lines, like the Romania line that you said, and um, he's he's like what really bothers me is like this came out right after Despicable Me, I believe, and yeah. so like like me, I don't know why they decided to name this one Minion too. Because like minions were already a thing, but he's definitely the like better minion compared to those things. Ooh, yeah, for sure. Um, I guess for me, yeah, I was gonna say a minion is under like because like he's also not just underrated; he's underappreciated, you know. Because like yeah. he's the one who like in the beginning he breaks him out of prison, like he's his, his homie, he's like day one, like right. Mega Mind kind of takes him for granted, and like that's kind of like a plot point. But he also like I think Sirius too, but, but like he has some underrated lines as well yeah like in the he's he's pretty memeable but yeah i mean i, I don't think there's because i feel like everyone talks about all the other characters in the movie because there's like the only other people in the movie are main characters other than like mm -hmm. people who come for one scene it's like yeah yeah even even you could say um what's this the alternate ego the the librarian that mega mind like becomes like even Bernard. him yeah Bernard, Bernard. <laughs> Like even him, he's also kind of like a main character, you know, because he's in the yeah. like, he's probably in half the movie, honestly. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I think I think we're all in agreement there. Like, I, I I'm pretty sure like minions like the like definition of underrated character. Like he's yeah, there yeah. and like he he has good lines, but like I'm gonna be real. Like between the time I first watched this, like back in middle school, and now. Like I had actually forgotten Minion was even in this movie. <laughs> I'd forgotten Damn, he was a character. Forget, yeah. right. My boy. Yeah, I, I mean, just like, sleep I on a boy like that. Movie, but like, yeah, I, I think he deserves more. Yeah, he definitely should have been in the movie more. Like, he was like very minimally used. I guess it might have been the point, but I mean, it's also like the concept too. Like, he's just like a fish in a bowl. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, that's, that's the whole this. thing. He's not yeah, he's not. And he comes he comes with him from his planet he's... too. Like right. Yeah, yeah. He's just he's just like he's the one who they send with him for like keeping, yeah. keeping oh, yeah. watch over can, him. Yeah. Can we talk about how like okay, Mega Mind was supposed to be the next Superman? Like yeah. it was it was set up exactly the same way. Like his home planet's like getting blown or whatever they send him off. But before they send him off, they give him this fish in a bowl. But they <laughs> say it's it's your minion. <laughs> Does Megamind's planet still support slavery? <laughs> Is that what you're going at? I don't know. Like that's not what I'm going. I'm just saying. Cancel like, Megamind's planet. Like, <laughs> Is everything about like Megamind's existence like supposed to be evil? Like, was he destined to be evil? Like, where's was everyone? I think he said from that's what made him though. Does he say that? He's like, I was yeah, he says to that. Be. But like, does that mean like okay, everyone from Megamind's like home world is like okay, like we're evil. We're just, we're, we're there's evil no laws. Things. Because there's nothing that established that, like, like, because, yeah, when you watch it in the beginning, you're thinking, like, okay, this is, like, Superman plus. So you're thinking, like, okay, these are just, like, people, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, like, you don't know their background. Or anything. I, don't know. I don't know. Maybe their culture supports, like, minions as, like, a lower class. Yeah. And I'm <laughs> telling you, they're intentionally servitude at the least. <laughs> or is it kind of like, um, have you all watched Detective Pikachu? Yeah. Or, yeah, it's like everyone has like their partner Pokemon. Everyone has their Pokemon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, so. Yeah, maybe uh, minions is partner. Yeah, we'll All right, let's let's go with that instead of sleeper. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll go then to underrated aspects. So, um, mine is that um, like Shrek Two. I think this movie has a banger of a score. Like, especially considering like when we talk about in B movie where the music is like there but it's not really used right. Here, I think every song that they used was like really mm -hmm. well, like with the scene, it really well matched with the scene that was used in. We, I talked about Highway to Hell, which is really good. Right after that is like when he's like destroying this city, basically, and they're playing Crazy Train. Uh, yeah. during, the, during the montage scene, they have Mr. Blue Sky playing. And like, yeah. honestly, Mr. Blue Sky oh, doesn't have, like, like, they have a, even mean. 
yeah, yeah, you know. All right, Mr. Blue Sky doesn't really <laughs> like mean like it doesn't have to go with that, but like it, they really yeah. they use it really well. Right. Yeah, I was gonna say they also when he gets broken out of prison, like the first song they play is like "Bad to the Bone." Like that's like a that that yeah. fits the song really. Like that that's just it fits it so well. I don't know why. Like, and there's like, just like other songs thrown in there, like "Back in Black," "Bad" that are like yeah, yeah. they're like yeah. villain songs. And like yeah. I just didn't think about putting these all. Like maybe it'd be a good playlist. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, it's probably a Mega Mind yeah, Spotify this playlist. Packed. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, so they yeah. have the Elvis song at the beginning. I forgot exactly what it's called, but it just sounds like really nice. So like, there's that. <laughs> Got all like the ACDC songs. They have, yeah, they, they just pick the yeah. whole ACDC there's playlist. Oh, I okay, I, I'd say like the best use of music was "Welcome to the Jungle." Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Like, yeah! Song. Oh my was, god! Like, yeah, so there's a well, lot. There's a lot of like classic rock songs in this movie. You know? yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, there's also another one. Like I'm not sure if you guys picked up on it, but when um when Metro Man's doing like his music for them to like show them like oh this is what I've been doing in my free time, it, it, the song he's singing is to the tune of um "Come as You Are" by Nirvana. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know that. I, didn't know that. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I know the lyrics Solid. to this song. It's like, I have eyes that can see. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's even more funny because, like, the lyrics that he uses for that don't fit the same flow as the original. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't fit, like, like it doesn't fit the flow it. of his song, like the one that he's, like, singing. Like, I don't really understand <laughs> what he's like, going for. He, but. he says the word lead to finish the line, and that, like, goes on for, like, I don't know, like, six or seven syllables, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Great aspect. I guess for me, yeah. I, I So I discussed it with this, we discussed it earlier, but this movie was heavily overshadowed by Despicable Me, because if you think about it, like, so I think you said Despicable Me came out before this, but it's almost, like, the exact same plot. It's, like, a villain who was, like, no, his, like, in this big of me, the guy's name is Felonious Goo. Like, he was named after felony. <laughs> like, both the movies, these guys are, like, destined to go be criminals. And then they, like, meet someone they love. So, like, for him, it's, like, a kid. And it's, like, Roxanne. And he decides to, like, change his ways by going against, like, the other bad guys. And, like, they have a minion, I guess, too, which I didn't really think about, who, like, yeah. I guess the minion in that movie is, like, the professor who, like, kind of cares about them. But anyways, like, this movie gets overshadowed by that so much and like honestly this is better than despicable me like you know why you know like this might this my theory about why this movie like wasn't and i kind of talked about this in my overrated aspect but the reason that this movie like wouldn't have done as like well is um school me is it's because it's not marketable because like there's nothing from this movie that you can like put like on a plush (laughs) or like (laughs) yeah the merchandise of yeah of like any like instance of the minions like okay i mean like from like yeah. despicable me minion mm-hmm. it's like okay yeah that that's what gets it out to the people yeah and yeah but like, it was like talk that's about this. yeah yeah that's the thing like i hadn't even heard of this movie like i remember i saw the trailer like i was like oh cool and then like a couple years later I'm like let me watch this movie but like my it's underrated like no one talks about this movie and mainly because it was like oh yeah like despicable me is like a good movie but this is like way better in my opinion i, I can do for a good like fishbowl minion action figure. Like I, I think that could take. Yeah, that could yeah man. Something. <laughs> but yeah, that's my yeah. underrated. It performed. It, it it holds up very well considering it came right after a movie that was very similar to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I agree with Sujay. Like for me, it's the music. I, I, you guys probably already knew I was going that direction mm-hmm. when I foreshadowed yeah. it in the B movie. But yeah, I guess we already kind of <laughs> talked about why that is. Yeah. yeah, for sure. All right, we'll go then to our last category, most overrated. Starting with most overrated scene. Um, this one was like a just like a random one that I didn't like. Whenever I saw this movie in the past, I didn't really think about it too much. But this time when I did it, when I watched the movie, um, in that scene that where like Roxanne has all those cards in her apartment and like she's yeah, like trying to make a connection, it. and then she just like backs up. And then it like forms Titan. I was gonna like, say that. I just, dude. That's I awful. don't really understand what the point of that scene was. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, yeah. like either like you're trying to show that like 
somehow on a bigger scale, like she knew it was it Titan. Spelled out Titan, yeah. And then like she put the cards like that. Or... It just doesn't make sense, like how it's yeah. uh, it's like clear. <laughs> yeah, I, I was I was definitely gonna say that. I, I think another one that I was thinking about is when like he gets a, like he gets outed at that hair that he's not Bernard. Like he's yeah. at the table and like uh, yeah. I like hits water. It's like you're telling me like this is like this is super genius. Thing. He made a ring that can like transform you into another person. And he doesn't think like water damage is like one of the things you should consider. Like it's not even that much, right? Like it's just it from, like a cloud. water damage, right? It was because like was. she put her hand on his watch and that like triggered it. That's to, what like, I was thought. It? Yeah. I thought it was water, honestly. Nah. I think it was water the second time when he was trying to like transform into someone yeah, 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 back yeah, into was, Bernard and she threw water. That was probably it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that's but the I'm first thinking. time, but, yeah, it was because Roxanne. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. You right, you right. I must have gotten mixed. But like, yeah, like still, like she th- throws water at him and he like can't transform nicely. Yeah. Like, uh, before I get to my scene, I kind of want to go back to like the Titan cards thing. So like, yeah. are you are you trying to like harp on that because like it's too convenient for it to look that way or is it because like partly because of that but sense. also because like i don't yeah i don't know why it was in the movie because yeah. like <laughs> he he just shows up to her like step anyway and like he was gonna do that regardless of her like finding out that her cards felt tight also what were the cards mm-hmm. for like i just don't recall it was just like the whole like trying to figure out what the conspiracy is like where this what conspiracy was there she thought like um, titan was she thought megamind wasn't actually like uh, she no, she was t- she was figuring out what the actual plan was. Like she was like Mega Mind created Titan because he couldn't stand to be alone. Uh, oh yeah, so I think that's yeah, yeah, that's what she was trying to figure out. Yeah, she was like yeah. actually just figuring out the plot of the movie because <laughs> like the plot revealed itself like five seconds later. Right. <laughs> so all the no, research yeah, is basically useless. <laughs> but yeah, that's um, my problem with it. <laughs> so yeah, my my underrated or not underrated overrated scene also has to do with Roxanne to an extent. Um, th- this isn't exactly like, like you can, you can argue it as not being like that bad of a scene because of like, okay, I'll, I'll explain what it is first. So at the end of the movie, when, uh, after he's already like revealed himself to be Mega Mind in disguise as Metro Man by saying like, okay, and now stay out of Metrocity. And then he comes back. Um, in order to defeat him, they have to get like the diffuser gun from the car, the invisible yeah. car. Yeah. But when when they show that like Roxanne gets to that like realization, like okay, we need to find. Oh that. yeah, I know what you're gonna say. Yeah. Yeah, she sees the invisible car. Yeah, it's invisible. <laughs> <That's kind of laughs> but like yeah. the the thing I was talking about, where it's like okay, you can argue it otherwise, is because like she says, "Remember that night I dumped you." And if you remember, that it, was kind of funny. Remember. Yeah, because <laughs> he's like, okay, the way she like dad. tells him that like the whole like plan or whatever, it's just so right. weird. Like she's like, remember that night at W? He's like, you should look back too. And he's like, mm-hmm. what are you to? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like I guess you could say like, okay, if you remember that night, you know that car is parked right there, and you can get the gun. Yeah. Like, it is a little I don't know, just, just the way that they zoom in on the car makes it seem like, oh, she sees the car, you know? But, yeah, I guess that's my... That's a good one. Overrated. Uh, we'll keep going, overrated character. So, I don't, know if, I don't know if you guys will agree with me on this one. I think, I think Metro Man's a little bit overrated. Um, this is kind of what you were saying earlier when he has, like, the super speed. Like, my question is, like, <laughs> when you can move that fast, how is, like, crime even an issue? Like... He literally could, like, do, he literally went all around the city, like, had, like, like a good hour, probably, to himself in, like, the span of a second. And, like, there's, there's no reason if you have this much power that you couldn't stop all crime and also make music. Like, you could do both. Yeah. There was, yeah. there was the time for that. Maybe it's just, yeah. like, okay, if you're moving that fast, like, you can't, like, play it for people. People can't, like, perceive it. Because you're playing, Dude, it, yeah. But you could like nah, make he's making the music, music for music sake, then, you know? like, Yeah. But can you even hear the sound that you're making? Because does the sound travel that fast? Zero. Like, would he not really be creating not. sonic like, the speed of light? Yeah. So he wouldn't even be able to like learn how to play. But he could still stop music. crime and then use the, his other time to make oh. music. <laughs> uh, I think we're getting too theoretical. <laughs> yeah. 
but that's my. Uh, I honestly, man. dude, I don't have an overrated character. I think everyone in this movie was like actually really funny. Like they played the role very well. I, I, this is the first time I actually don't think it, because like I'm trying to run through the cast. So, like obviously not Mega Man. <laughs> I mean, I didn't think Mega Man. I, I not Mega Man. I'm not Man. I thought he was perfectly fine. Like I thought, I thought he was honestly really funny. And then like Minion, Minion, we already talked about Roxanne. I mean, I Roxanne guess was my wanted, honorable mention. I think. I, I don't like, know. If but like, if you want to, like, but. thing is, I didn't think. I think everyone, because like I said earlier, the cast of this movie was like literally like five people, and they had like w- no one else like come as a recurring character it was just five main characters for the most part and it revolved around them so like they had a lot of time to like each person need, like had a role to do and like i didn't really think it was it was overrated any of the stuff they did i guess maybe you could say roxanne for like some of the scenes like the whole like the whole like color thing you pointed out but i think that's more of an overrated scene than her specifically because she like actually like did it part pretty well so i I, say, I don't have anyone actually <laughs> Okay, yeah, I was I was very conflicted between both of these perspectives. So like I was thinking, okay, Metro Man seems like the obvious choice for overrated, but like I actually kind of like his character overall. Yeah. So like I think I think that was like one of the main reasons why I didn't choose him. I was also thinking Roxanne too, but like I don't know. I didn't think she really did anything that, like, aside from, like, that one scene, like, I think that was more of, like, the scene than, like, Roxanne being Roxanne. Um, so, for me, like, he's not even, over, like, no one's gonna think he's overrated. But I chose the Warden. Dude, I was thinking you were gonna do that. <laughs> yeah, I was like, the way this is going, right, I know exactly right, where you're right. going. Yeah, he's the old guy, I mean, right? The old guy. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I just don't like but him for some reason. We got we got another again. character coming back from an old episode. Um, we got J.K. Simmons. He's the oh, is it actually? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh <laughs> I did not. Okay. I don't know if that changes her mind, but <laughs> like, but like, okay, no, I no, want to explain that, how he is overrated, though. How is that, it like that, he, that works? Yeah, yeah, explain, better, explain. Then. First of all, he's like that that was, the movie for a scene, and he's like pretty funny. Okay, no, yeah, that works <laughs> even better then, because like you have J.K. Simmons of all people playing this warden, and he doesn't say anything like funny or like uh, dramatic yeah. <laughs> or anything. I guess. So yeah, he was a very lame like, character, in my opinion. Like, yeah, I mean, especially like J.K. Al- Simmons. Kind of like along these same lines is what's gonna be in my overrated aspect as well. But I'll wait till we get there. Honestly. If you want, just keep going on that. Because okay, all right. If it's the yeah, same thing, go ahead. All right, yeah. so overrated aspects. I don't know if you guys looked at, like, the full, like, who was, like, involved in this movie or whatnot, but I I basically read that Hans Zimmer did the music. What? Right? All right, that's like, the, what I know you do? do. Yeah, Hans that's, Zimmer that's, did the that's music. Overrated. Yeah. And it's not really, like, that. It's all just, really. it's all just yeah, covers. It's all. Yeah. Not even covers, just straight other songs. Yeah. I also read that, okay, this was the first movie that he did the soundtrack for immediately after doing the soundtrack for Inception. What? He was like, yeah, let me just take a break on this one. Yeah, (laughs) what did he actually make in this movie? What did he actually do in this? Like, did he write anything for this movie? I mean, yeah, like the score. Like, like, not like the random Like the background music, yeah. Yeah, Like the actual, like, score was him yeah, that's, um that's that is under overrated though. i don't know if i like i don't know if you guys know daniel pemberton or like michael giacchino i know yeah, michael giacchino, giacchino. yeah, yeah. They, they do like all these random movie soundtracks like i don't know if they were like that popular at that time but like, giacchino, I, like, I think was because he, he he's been with like pixar for a while uh, gotcha. Like he's done so, all. Okay, the, yeah, I, so I like know he did. Oh, he's done, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, so like I feel like if you got someone like that doing it, that that makes a lot more sense. Even if it wasn't like all that noteworthy, it, it's it's still like, it's not like you're taking someone from like this critically acclaimed like, <laughs> Oscar nominated Christopher Nolan directed movie and making him do this. Like I, I just didn't see like the point of him being. Yeah, here. that's a good that's a good point. Yeah, that that's good. Yeah, I guess yeah they could have used them more, but I guess. Again, like you said, like the whole vibe of the movie wasn't like super serious, so yeah, it's like to build up like drama and tension, which I mean he did pretty well, I guess, in background score because you know it's I can't even think of the background score now. Like 
it's that just like honestly it's just like susp- it's just the suspenseful music and like that's all i remember maybe I don't know. but yeah i agree with you um my overrated aspect was kind of like what garish was talking about earlier about how this was overshadowed my my main problem with this is that there's no sequel to this movie like Oof, there are movies yeah. like like movies like shrek madagascar despicable me kung fu panda they all had trilogies franchises spin-offs on like the main like like random side character and Mega Man couldn't have even gotten like a sequel. Like this was such a like good like it's concept. Good it's probably because like it didn't like it was low, such low grossing. They're just like let's abandon it. Right. But like yeah. yeah. I think that goes back to what you're saying. Like the reason there's these franchises is because they can market more like plushies to sell. Like, yeah. You can't really make a Mega Mind plush. <laughs> like, <laughs> that'd be kind of scary. I guess that, that's really what it comes down to. If you can make a plushie out of it, then yeah, you're good. Like all these no, that's, Star Wars movies. That's what I was saying. Yeah, yeah. the the new style with like the the what the Pogs. Yeah. Is that mm-hmm. what they're yeah, yeah like that's that's unnecessary completely. That's just to sell yeah. sell toys. Like, did they even do anything in the movie? No. <laughs> like, they're just like on the island. Okay, it's completely. They, they were there to sell like, exactly one like vegan joke, and that was it. Oh uh, yeah. I, I albeit, it was a like, good vegan joke, but like, <laughs> like. <laughs> I don't know. They just didn't really need to be. Looking there. over this list, like Despicable Me has minions. Um, I guess Kung Fu Panda is like kind of yeah. <laughs> Kung Fu Panda was its own trilogy, and then they made a show out of it. So I think that's fine. Did you watch I, the show? <laughs> I haven't seen the show. I watched some of the show because yeah. it was on Nickelodeon when I was younger. What was, was the show the same like three D animation style, or was it? Yeah, yeah, it was, the, it was the same thing. It was just like okay. the side adventures. Shrek, uh, I'm trying to like think of like what's the marketable part, marketable part I, of Shrek. Like, Puss in Boots was a huge thing when he was in. I think Puss in Boots is what's pulling it, but mm-hmm. the kids, you can't have like, like Shrek can, like plushes. I <laughs> no, you can make a you, you make the Shrek. So there's definitely a market for it now, Shrek. but I don't I think it's like for Shrek kids. Has been, I feel like it's been too corrupted by the internet. To the make internet. A plush. <laughs> I think you can make a donkey plushie, maybe. maybe. Maybe, but like even then, it's a donkey. I feel like you like, but yeah, that, that was my argument. There's no sequel for this movie. That's kind of stupid. That's over. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, mine is kind of going off of that, but not like really. I think it's like pretty overrated how like in the in the whole grand scheme of things when they're like making all these kinds of movies, like I don't like how, I mean like this, this is kind of not, this is like a complaint about the industry, honestly, but like oh. I hate how, no, it's like, like I hate how it's like not, I don't want to say not, Cool. like I- i'm really fumbling for the words but it's like it's hard to revive a movie after so long because like i feel like now megamind has a lot of traction which again but like so like this kind of goes this i'll try to make this a bad movie but like they kind of sh- i feel like they should have known to wait some time before releasing it especially because they have had to know that this was like the same plot as minions not not the, uh, i said minions. despicable me too of one so, like, I feel like they, it was, like, kind of oversight that they should have thought a little bit. Like, you know, wait for the whole craze to die down and then release a new movie, maybe. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I feel um, like, especially since they should have known, like, they had to know about, like, we're, like, college kids who know nothing about, like, the movie industry. Like, they've had to have known that, like, marketability is a huge thing. I guess, like, uh, it, they're both DreamWorks, too. So, it's, like, it's the yeah. same studios. Like, if it was a different studio, I'd like, give them some slack. I'd be like, oh, maybe you didn't know that this movie was going to be so good. Right. Yeah. That's why they made that, the that money like, directly. Yeah. Wait, yeah. So, one thing I'm not sure about. So, like, is Illumination and DreamWorks the same thing? They're so, Illumination is basically like think of it as like Pixar <laughs> going to Disney. Illumination okay. was their own animation studio, and DreamWorks bought them. So, uh, okay. so when did that happen? I think it was Despicable Me. That was the first Illumination DreamWorks crossover. Okay. I don't know anything. I don't know any of the other movies they've made. I know they did like I shorts just, before then. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess were like, they Illumination when they um when they were did they make Mega Mind? Uh, no, no. I, I don't think so. Oh, okay. They made Despicable Me, Sing, uh, The Lorax, The Grinch. I think they made Secret Life of Pets too. Yeah. Oh, I think they um, did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like a lot of DreamWorks stuff now, but um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, to kind of, like, answer, like, what Girish was talking about, I think some of it also has something to do with, okay, so if this is kind of, like, an animated movie marketed to kids that follows, like, some aspects of, like, 
the the Superman plot stuff. Yeah. Like maybe you also have to like consider like okay when should you time the release of this movie that like younger kids will s- still like that's get fair. that reference. That's fair. Maybe. Yeah. But I feel I like Superman is kind of timeless. You know, like the whole came crashing on a spaceship. Oh, hey, I'm I'm willing to believe that kids now like don't know that. No, I I feel like I don't know. It's pretty. It's pretty <laughs> ingrained in pop culture. I think it's now. iconic. Yeah. I know. What I, it's I I I'm just kind of nitpick yeah. at the movie. Like I I, I, I was. I'm also yeah, pretty sure. Movie. Like this was around the time that Man of Steel came out because I remember seeing that. Man of Steel is 2010, it? I think. They didn't so Han Han Simley do that. Yeah, Han Simley did this. I did Han Simley do? Yeah. What the hell? Han Simley or Chan now? One of those. I think it was Hans No, Zimmer, wait, though. it was, no, 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 it's, uh, wasn't it Eric Whitaker? Because we played this in. No, it was definitely not Eric Whitaker. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait I think wait, it was Hans wait. Zimmer. This is unrelated, but it's Hans Zimmer, yeah. Yeah. Did he think Batman be Superman? But, yeah. So maybe um, that was the reason why he was in this movie, who knows? Possibly. Know. They saw superhero movies, they're like, yeah, this guy it's got to do it justice. <laughs> He's just like, yeah, I'll sit back. I keep though, like, I think one of the most underrated Hans Zimmer things, like, that he's done is probably the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 soundtrack. Yeah. Now, that's Oh, Eric, yeah, Eric, yeah. Eric Whitaker was a uh, Batman v Superman. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You guys have anything else to say about the movie, overrated or under- otherwise? Solid movie. If you have not seen it, go I mean, watch yeah, it. If you yeah. haven't seen it, you can watch it. Yeah, this is this is probably the most underrated movie that we're doing all season. Like, definitely um, check it out if you haven't. Otherwise, thanks for listening. That's yes. true. <laughs> <laughs>Thank you for listening to our episode on Megamind. If you haven't already, please give us a follow on whatever platform you're listening to this on. And also follow our Instagram at Overrated Podcast. If you're listening on YouTube, please hit us up with a like and subscribe. Thank you for listening and we'll see you next week. This has been Overrated.